Is you not really the prototype of disobedience? What's your point of view about Jonah? Hi, I'm Pastor John Niches. Today, I will talk about Jonah, disobedient or messenger from future. I warn you, until you evict your mind from any prejudice, you won't understand this subject. When we talk about prejudice, we refer upon a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. That's the reason why most people set their opinion about anybody, according to her long time ago, even though they lack of logical criteria based in evidence, but in legends, fables, and story tales so far. Obviously, this fact difficult find the truth since our judgment is contaminated by our personal perception. We have stigmatized the prophet Jonah, a sample of rebel and disobedient for millennia. Let's put the story of Jonah in historical context, because Jonah suffered the abuse on Israel by Assyria, which capitalist Nineveh, where God delivered him to preach, despite he had seen his compatriots suffering looting, pillage, theft, rape, assassination, xenophobia, and all of type of crimes against them. If you take Jonah's place for a while, then we can understand his mind about this matter. Let's take a look in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Here, we all stop in this point. Many of us can condemn to Jonah because of trying free from God's order. Because of that, almost none of us think naming our firstborn as Jonah, ever. For us, it's like a donation or something. Though, call me attention to the fact why God arises a strong wind that was leading the ship adrift, nonetheless Jonah was sleeping, pretty quiet. Obviously the means he felt in peace despite the gruesome plight. The Bible says it, Thank for the me, uh, let's look at the verse 4 through 5. The question is, how is it possible a man can sleep amid tremendous wind with almost break the ship? It's impossible for anyone to get some sleep. Doubtless, this guy belonged to a peaceful environment. Because of this, despite his horrible experience, he could keep the can. Evidently, Jonah kept a big secret from a spiritual point of view. Take a look at his censor before the mariners in the chapter 1, verse 6, 8, 9, 12, 15, and 17. What kind of man offered his own life to save each mariner? I can conclude, while Jonas slept, probably he received a revelation from heaven to behave like that. I think Jonah figured out what was going to happen about him and the famous fish that explained why he was pretty quiet despite the tempest. He knew that he was going to die, even though the Bible doesn't specify, but it's possible belief Jonah could be alive three days and three nights without breath. Record his name means Pigeon, and according to the Bible, the Pigeon symbolized the Holy Ghost. When Jesus was baptized, 
the Holy Ghost descended as passion upon his head. Second the board, he testified his soul went down to death status. And from there, he recognized the greatness of God and praised him and prayed to him. This event reminds us that Jesus journeys after death. But while the people stigmatized to join us, nevertheless, Jesus gave testimony about him, comparing his crucifixion and post mortem process with John's experience. The Bible testified what is said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 38 through 42. Look how the Lord compares to Jonah with Solomon. And the most important fact is Jesus compared himself with Jonah crossing. Just take a look. When Jonah said while he was in the whale's belly, three days and three nights, in the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 1 through 10, where Jonah narrates his status and he describes the words belly as hell. Furthermore, call me attention in the verse 6. Jonah tells, he went down to the bottoms of, of the mountains. But the most important detail is when he said God had brought up his life from corruption. Something like that the Bible stated about the Lord through Stephen when he taught about David's and Jesus' resurrection in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 27. And Stephen keeps speaking about David's narrative, referring to Jesus in the verse 31. All of these of red establishes a great similarity between Jesus and John's death, because both of them were in the hell, as the Bible states. The Apostle Paul states in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, about this. Definitely, Jonah, more than being a villain, was the perfect prophetic messenger from the future into the past about Jesus' crucifixion. Well, what do you think about this subject? Now is your turn. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Please subscribe, leave your comment, and share it to enhance and improve this Christian community.